And then we'll also have a leader, Optimus Prime. This is meant to play up that force battle scene, so we'll be having him with the battle hooks, as well as uh, battle damage. So he'll actually have a new face, a new sculpt, and also a new deco, really playing up that key signature battle that we saw in Eventually Fall. And then uh, there's been some speculation that Battle Ops Bumblebee is our new uh, leader Bumblebee. He's actually about two inches taller than our leader class. Um, and again, this is really meant to play up the iconic personality of Bumblebee. We have done a couple different versions of Bumblebee over the years, but really I think what we're happy about and really excited is that this really delivers Bumblebee's personality. He has two great loving modes. You know, he has one where he's Sam's sidekick kind of joking around and always playing around, being into trouble. But then he also, as we saw, has that fierce warrior mode, ready to go to battle, ready to do business against the Decepticons. And our design team has done a phenomenal job of really delivering against that. So within uh, Bumblebee, he actually will play up those two modes by simply flipping out the missile cannons in vehicle mode. You'll actually get battle sounds when those, cannon, when those cannons actually flip out, um, as well as just basic vehicle sounds when he is in vehicle mode. And then when you actually go into uh, battle mode, oh, I'm sorry, uh, when you actually go into robot mode, he has a flip down mask that actually also triggers entirely different sounds and phrases. So again, playing up the, that personality of him, you have an automatically converting arm cannon, so when you raise the arm, the plasma cannon comes out, the hand disappears, and lights and sounds come through it. Again, really delivering the core essence of what this character is. And that rounds it out, uh, except for Human Alliance, we will also have a new figure with Autobot, Autobot Jazz um, and Captain Lennox. This, uh, so we will have then had Mudflap, Skids, Barricade, Bumblebee, and Sideswipe in our Human Alliance line. So we are going to continue to look to find ways to create newness and innovation within this. Um, and we're really excited about uh, what, the way Jazz turned out. The one big piece here is that Lennox, uh, what Lennox is sitting on is also a motorcycle that Lennox can drive on. That motorcycle <laughs> converts into uh, an artillery piece. So, the, a new segment we're actually having, and this is where I'd love to have Aaron come up and talk a little bit about how uh, we're you know, invoking the uh, new characters into our lore, um, also delivering differentiation here, is in our Generations line. So, as many of you might have known, we have Transformers Universe, we also have Transformers Classics, which was about reimagining some of our great heritage characters. But what we felt was that, that was a, those two were very limited in what we could and couldn't do, and what we wanted to do is create a new segment um, called Transformers Generations, which is just in our deluxe, but it gives us the flexibility to introduce new characters, whether it be from Activision video game, whether it be from comic books, or whether it be from our heritage. So it gives us a better and overall flexibility to really you know, establish some characters that have different places and different meanings throughout our entire brand. So uh, we can get into the first one, and we have Autobot Drift. So, you know, the inspiration can come from anywhere, so we have a very robust publishing program going all the way back to the beginning of Transformers. Um, so we want to bring some of the characters that really didn't start as products um, forward and bring them out as products now. Um, Autobot Drift is, is, is now the IDW universe, um, you know, the Samurai, Ninja, uh, Autobot, Decepticon, uh, with his swords, we're very excited to bring these characters out, so it just shows that they don't always have to start in the toy side and go out to entertainment, they can come back and become toys as well. Uh, one of the other oh guys we're having is Thrust, <laughs> so this oh will actually be oh a my God. we'll also have other Seekers coming oh out later on in the line. Uh, which over. we'll, of course, be happy to talk about at BotCon and then at Comic-Con, so we don't want to get rid of all of our guys just yet, but uh, we're really excited. New wings, you know, with the cone head, I think really exciting. Um, it actually awesome. looks awesome. New wings, though, right? And then we have oh, uh, Dark Metal. Yeah, so here's a perfect example of Straxus, for those of you who know Straxus. Mm -hmm. um, never made into a product, very limited in uh, even what you would know from the comics about this character. So. Uh, you know, we thought it was a perfect time. Uh, some of our fans over the years at BotCon have, you know, talked to us about the characters that, that really don't get a lot of love, and this is a perfect example. We couldn't get the name Straxus, um, so, you know, his, his, he's the Lord of Dark, Dark Mount, um, so we were playing that up and honoring that so that we could uh, bring this character out. But, uh, you know, for those of you who know who the character is, uh, the head is spot on. We're happy to have him as a product now. And, and he is an actual triple, triple chain, which is, uh, I think, a pretty cool uh, mule 
sometimes with our triple changers, that third mode can get a little uh, iffy on what it actually is. Um, and I think it's pretty clear that it's a, it's a big, uh, big, big piece of artillery. So, um, this new segment, uh, power core combiners, uh, is something that I have to say is I'm really excited about, and not just as a marketer and brand manager here, because but I. The reason why I think it's, it's just a really cool is because it's taking two pieces of our lore and our heritage of mini-con play along with combination play, and it's allowed us to really reinvent what those two things could be. And it's also about how we can reinvent the story about what combination play is. You know, as you look at you know, the way combiners have been over the years, it's always been about two guys becoming a bigger guy, um, you know, the gestalt type of characters about there's a reason why they, they need to go to battle. And really for us, what we did is we've taken some liberties with that. Um, and also mini cons, you know, they've always been kind of that helper. There's ways to get powered up through them. And we want to combine them together and really create this entirely new system of play that creates this interchangeable system, which is something that hasn't necessarily existed within Transformers. And so as we get into it, uh, the first that we have is our five pack. So the five pack comes with five figures. Um, the first is, and it's right here, is it's a scout size figure. And on all of our scout size figures and our power core combiners, they all have these little square pegs that creates this interchangeable system of play. And you have four legend sized vehicles. But what you actually get is when you plug these uh, legend sized vehicles onto those square pegs, you get an automatic conversion. So that arm all of a sudden blossoms, the, the tank or missile carrier automatically blossoms out into an arm, automatically blossoms out into a leg. It's really exciting really cool play pattern. But then you also have the interchangeable system of the two packs. So our two packs will come again with that central scout size figure. It will also have a minicon. The minicon actually has four modes. So he'll have his own individual robot mode. He'll have the weapon mode that fits into the hand of the scout size figure. He has a vehicle weapon mode. And then he also has the power up armor, which can be tagged on to the larger five pack. So again, when we start talking about this interchangeable system, I could take this scout size figure from the two pack and actually put him in here, and then I can create an entirely new different guy. And where we've also really tried to take liberties is that this is all about that commander, um, really taking charge of the system. And so in our two packs, we have commander, which is a hover, um, as long, along with the minicon caliber. So this is wave one. We have smolder, which is the decepticon with chopster. And then we also have uh, Autobot Searchlight with Backline. And then this is just a preview of two of the guys we are going to be having coming out in Wave 2, so Ice Pick and also Lead Foot. And then we get into the five pack. So the big thing about the five pack is that, um, and the way we've actually looked at the story behind this, is that the legend-sized vehicles are actually all drones. They're not individual characters versus what we've done in the past, where you have a team of, you know, you have the aerial bots, the Skyburst, and all these different uh, Transformer figures. This is about this, that central figure, Commander, Bomb Shock, <coughs> taking control over all these drones to create this Combaticon team. And it's the same way that we get into with the aerial bots and having Skyburst. And again, it's that interchangeable system of play, which we'll be happy to show you when we get down into the toy, the toy room. The middle scouts do have their own robot yes. mode. Yes, yep, they have three modes. So the middle sized scout has their own individual robot mode, vehicle mode, and then also their combined power up mode. And I will say, the, um, I apologize, the head, actually, there are two different heads. So when he has the individual robot mode, it's uh, a different head. And when he goes into that power up mode, he actually he can change the head out so it is becoming a bigger kit sized character. And then these are just previews of two of the teams that we'll be having come up for Wave 2, the Rally Bots, and then the Destructicons. And then Activators, this is a new innovation. Uh, we have Activators in our animated line. We've actually gone back and said, how can we make this more simple for those younger kids? And really what we're trying to do is create a central push-button point, uh, which is either an Autobot or a Decepticon shield, which actually then uh, springs into action. So then push that button and I only have to flip out the hands and the feet. So again, really allowing those younger kids who are fans of the brand to be able to have successful uh, transformation. 